Hey guys, okay, I wanted to share my experience with this varicocine surgery and post-operation and recovery and all that good stuff um, because so many of you reached out to me and said, I need the surgery or I had surgery and didn't work or what kind of surgery did you have? And so many of you had questions, so I wanted to address them um, and maybe help you figure out if you need the surgery. I'm not a doctor, so I can't, um, you know, say, oh yes, you need the surgery, but I can give you some signs that I had and share my experiences with you. Um, so maybe you could figure out, you know, do I need to ask my doctor? Do I need to go to the doctor? Or yeah, I think I probably need to have the surgery and talk to my doctor about it. Um, so first thing I'm going to start with is there are spider veins and there are varicose veins. Now, some people get them mixed up. Spider veins are superficial, the little veiny blue and purple veins that you see on your legs. Um, almost all women have them, some sort of variation of them. Some have more, some have less. Um, but many, many people have them. They're just like bloke broken... Um, broken blood vessels that show up um, on your legs and then varicose veins are a little bit deeper they're not your deep veins but i forget what it's called i'm not a doctor see <laughs> but it's when your bigger veins um you have valves that let the um blood flow up or down your vein and then when your valves get weak and they just kind of sit like this and they don't close and let the blood in and out they kind of sit like this and then all that blood pools there and that's what makes those veins look really big and puffy like the one I had on my calf it was like I mean it was really big and that's because my vein my valves broke and would just let that um, that blood just pool there so that's the difference not in like technical terms but that's the difference between spider veins and varicose veins varicose veins are a lot more serious um, they're throbbing they hurt um, mine were just like really heavy like when I'd run or work out I could just feel that heaviness and then if I stood a lot that day it, I would just get pain all the way down just one of my legs right now the other one they said I'll probably need to have done later but that's a whole nother story anyway so it's more painful spider veins are just superficial just those little blue purple veins that you see they don't hurt normally um, and they're cosmetic. Insurance does not cover spider vein procedure. My insurance did cover um, my varicose vein procedure. Okay, so let me get to your question. Actually, let me start with saying a little bit of my story and how I kind of got the varicose vein and then I will answer your questions that you guys left me on my Instagram and Facebook posts. Um, so first things first, I do have a family history of them. My dad, my grand, or both my grandmas have them. Um, I probably have other family members who have them. So in my case, I do have family history, but also I had an incident happen that um, kind of contributed to it just getting worse a lot quicker. Um, so when I was in high school, I was a dancer, competitive dancer. I was doing a jump and when I came down, I remember landing like my front leg just like boom I felt like this jar in my like this like kind of pop in my leg it wasn't ligaments it wasn't bones it wasn't anything I didn't really know what it was I couldn't explain what it was um, and just kind of left it alone well after each pregnancy so I got pregnant with my first daughter or my first child um, you could see the vein in my calf getting a little bit bigger while I was pregnant um, and then it went away after I had my first child my first baby um, it went away then I had my second and it got a lot worse and it kind of went up my leg a little bit more and then after I had him so while I was pregnant with him it got worse after I had him some of it went down but still my calf that big one that I think I injured or whatever in high school it stayed it was really puffy I mean you could push on it it stayed big then my third child messed me up. Um, it went all the way up my leg. I had tons of aches and pain in my groin area. Um, the varicose vein just, it went all the way up. Now that could contribute to um, pregnancy and then my vein, my vein, my vein just being weak to begin with. Um, and pregnancy does do it a lot. So if you have family history and then you get pregnant, there's a probably a good chance that you might develop them. Um, so at some point if you have two kids 
you know, with each pregnancy, they can get worse and if, unless you have it taken care of. So that's my story. Um, actually a little bit more after my third child, I had, this was two years ago in June. I had the first surgery with a different doctor and they did the laser treatment. I'll talk about the different kinds of treatments, but they did the laser treatment, went in, had it done on the top, went and recovered. Then I had it again on the bottom part of my leg, went and recovered. And then I never heard from them again. I was supposed to have the injections. I was supposed to have all this other stuff. I called them. They're like, oh, we have to get something with your insurance. And then that was it. Never heard from them. Well, then I started feeling pain again. And I'm like, something's not right. So this year I went to a different doctor and I said, hey, I'm having the same symptoms I did before. Um, I had the surgery. Can you, you know, can we get this checked and everything? And he did the, um, the ultrasound and said, yeah, your veins are completely open back up. That surgery, you know, wasn't successful. And I'm like, oh, I felt so defeated because one, I spent the money on it, but two, I had that downtime and it didn't work. And so now I have to do it all over again. So, um, so this doctor that I went to, he was amazing, awesome. Um, he did a different type of procedure and I'll talk about the different type of treatments and procedures. Um, but he was just, he fixed me. And so I'm going to send them a thank you note and say, thank you so much, um, for fixing me because hopefully, I mean, I'll see in a couple months how I feel, but when they did the follow up ultrasound, they said, you know, it's closed. It ain't opening back up. So I'm so thankful for that. Okay. Let me get to, I know I'm talking fast, there's a lot to cover and I'm trying to do it as quickly as possible so I don't keep you guys and waste your time. Okay, because your time is valuable to me and my time is valuable. So, okay, the different types of procedures. So for varicose veins, you can have, um, there's injections for little veins that come off the big vein. So your big vein, I'm and I'm not using medical terms, so any nurses or doctors or anything, sorry that I'm kind of, you know, just saying big vein, little vein. <laughs> but your big vein, which was for me, um, that was open, um, I had, now the first time, I had the laser treatment done, which they just stick a, um, a tiny tube up your leg and then just laser it shut and it collapses the vein. In my case, it opened back up and he told me oh if you have more kids it could open back up um, then there's the injections now the injections it's like a saline solution or something like that and they shoot that into your little veins that come off of the big vein because they can't get into those little veins I mean they're twisty and turning they can't get in there with the laser so they inject them and same thing they'll collapse over time um, I think he told me it takes you know three to five months for it to completely collapse and then um, your body will dissolve the veins over time. The treatment I had this last time is a um, fiber optic, hold on, I wrote it down. No, 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 not fiber optic. Radio frequency occlusion. That's what I had done. So what happens is they stick a, it said like a, because I, I researched this, said like a catheter type thing in your vein and then they heat it up, which is why I felt that burning pain, because the first time I didn't feel that, first time I didn't have any pain, this time I had a little bit of pain, but I'll talk about that later. Um, I felt like a burning, and then they slowly pull it out, and it um, basically like kind of cauterizes it, and then the vein collapses, and then he told me, this is what the doctor said, because I asked, he said, oh, over time, your body will just dissolve that vein and it'll just go away. And pretty much your body, which is amazing, our bodies are so awesome, the blood will just redirect somewhere else. So it's not gonna go back down into that vein. Um, so I thought that was really cool. So laser, radio frequency, occlusion. That's what I had done this last time. If you've had laser done, and they reopen back up. I would look back. I would look into the radio frequency or see if you can find a doctor who does it. If you're in the Orlando area, that's where I had mine done. I can give you my doctor. Leave me a comment or email me. He was he's amazing, and um, I'll give you his information. The other difference is with the laser. The other doctor said, "Oh, we have to do the top, and then come back another time and do the bottom. And then you come back and do the injections." No, this doctor was like, when I told him that, he was like, no, I do it all at one time. I'm like, 
well then I don't have to come back and then I'm not wasting my time like oh have to recover and then have it done again and then come back and I'm like boom sign me up if this is gonna fix me fix my pain and my swelling like I'm done I sign on the die line I'm signing up um so, oh, the other type of surgery, I know some of you said like your mom may have had it, I know my grandma had it, is removal. That sounds painful. They pull the vein out of your leg. Mm, 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 mm. It just makes me, mm, no. Um, I know it's kind of, I think it's kind of old fashioned and not a lot of people do that anymore, but it's still, some people still do it if it's like necessary um, but normally that it like say you have a ton of them and there's like really bad ones and stuff then yes they'll do it um, but in my case I just had the one big one and then I had a bunch of little ones coming off the bottom that they injected with that saline solution whatever <laughs> whatever it is I just know it fixed me <laughs> okay let me get to your questions um, I answered how I got mine um, why did I have it done because of the pain. I mean, that was the main reason. Um, it was not attractive, but I used to try and hide it a lot, like especially after my second child and they got a lot worse. And then once I became a little more confident in myself and just like, who cares? Like, you know, what does it matter if I have a little lump on my leg? Like everyone has something like that they're insecure about. So I'm sitting here focusing on, if you hear my kids, I'm sorry. <laughs> Everyone's focusing on their own things to notice your own things that you think are flaws. Another question was, did I go on blood thinners? No, I did not. Um, that just might be something that if you are prone to like blood clots or something, you may need to go on blood thinners. I know my grandma had a blood clot that released into her lung, and so she is forever on blood, clot, or blood thinners right now because of it. Um, they did come across a blood clot in my leg while doing surgery and I asked him about it and he said, don't worry about it. He said, because it is not a deep vein and it's, um, one of the, I don't know what the term is, but the closer veins to the surface that they don't worry about it. Um, now if it was a deep vein, he said, yes, we would be very concerned about that. But, um, just because of the varicose vein and the blood sitting there, that's why it developed the blood clot and not to be concerned about it. So check I'm glad I don't have to worry about that um let's see how long is recovery okay so they told me my doctor told me um, for two days I had to wear the wrapping um, two days post-surgery I had to wear the wrapping which they like wrap your leg really tight it's kind of uncomfortable because it's a wrap and it's not just like a single stocking so some parts are like tight and some parts aren't um, but then after you take that off after two days, then you put the full stocking on your whole leg and you have to wear it day and night until your follow-up appointment, which mine was on on Monday, had surgery on Thursday, had a follow-up on Monday. Um, and then you just have to wear it during the day for two weeks post-surgery and that's it. And I said, so I don't have to like just two weeks post-surgery and I don't have to wear it. And he said, it's not necessary. And I was like, really? And he's like, yeah, I mean like, unless you're flying, um, traveling long distance, or if you feel like you're going to be on your feet a lot, he said yes, then definitely, you know, everybody should wear them then. Um, but he said, because I said exercise, and he said, it's not necessary, and I was like, wow, that's awesome. Now, if I feel pain, or like, if I feel like I need to wear it, then I will, um, but he said just for every day, you really don't need to wear them, um, unless, like I said, you're on your feet a lot, or you're traveling long distance, something like that. Um, so I can't work out. I can't, um, so I couldn't, okay. The workout question. I know everyone said, how long can't you work out? Okay. So I can't, um, do heavy lifting, anything strenuous for two weeks post-surgery. He said, you can do upper body, nothing like, you know, where you're going to be using your legs a lot, but he said, you can do upper body. I can do core. I can do anything like involving this area just nothing involving my legs or like heavy lifting and I'm like awesome so I think I might do an upper body workout today just because I've been like missing that like sweat and blood flow and you know um just get my body moving the other thing is exercise is so 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 good for circulation and for your veins that they say do not stop exercising do stop do not stop moving post 
surgery, you need to move your body. It's so good for your for your veins, for circulation, um, just for everything. So they say, no, don't lay around. Don't just sit and lift your leg. I mean, yes, when you're sitting down, maybe at night watching TV, like you need to elevate your leg, but otherwise move your body, get that blood flow and get that circulation. It's great for your veins. Um, so yes, I was encouraged to walk. Um, I can run after, you know, a few days, which I haven't cause I'm like, eh, I don't want to, I don't want to chance it, but nothing like super strenuous, like heavy lifting type stuff for two weeks. That's it. Two weeks for me in my case. Um, some people might be a little different, but for me, two weeks downtime and then back in the set. <laughs> okay. Is it permanent? Yes. My procedure that I just had done is permanent. The laser procedure obviously wasn't permanent, but this one is apparently the, okay. So my doctor told me that the laser is kind of a little outdated and that they haven't used it in a long time and that they prefer the, um, what's it called, radio frequency type procedure now um, because it's more effective and, um, you know, it, it just works better. Um, so yes, it's supposed to be permanent. Um, it's not supposed to reopen back up. I even asked him if I were to get pregnant, which I'm not, but if I were, would it open back up? And he looked at me like I was crazy. He's like, no, like the vein goes away. Like it closes and then it kind of your body absorbs it and then it's gone so how's it going to reopen back up and i'm just like man i wish i would have had a surgery with this you know this type of surgery two years ago when i originally had it done um okay next question was is it painful yes it was a little painful now i have a high tolerance for pain i think i can handle pain pretty well um the worst part was i could feel and that's my gross something out but I could feel them putting the catheter type thing up in my leg and then I could feel that burning when they closed the vein um so that might turn some of you off and you might not want to do it because of that but honestly for me it took like 15 minutes the whole surgery total for one leg took about 15 minutes for me, 15 minutes of pain is worth my lifetime having constant throbbing and pain in my leg. So 15 minutes compared to the rest of my life, totally worth it. So don't let the pain scare you. Um, and it, honestly, it wasn't like uh, excruciating pain, like where I'm crying. I just kind of went like, and that was it. Okay, how long do I have to wear compression? I think I kind of already talked about this. I have to wear it for two weeks. Um, straight I can take it off at night um, when I sleep but two weeks and then just if I'm on my legs a long time traveling yada yada I already talked about that okay um, where to oh where to get socks okay inexpensive socks I was like okay so we went to the um, medical store to get the tall the thigh-high compression sock and they said oh it'll be about 75 to 80 dollars I'm like what? Like, no, I just spent money on the surgery. Now I have to spend $80 on a sock. So I said, mom, look up Amazon and see if they have any on there. Cause I know I've gotten running compression socks there before. Boom. We pulled it up between, there were some between 25, 30, $35. I was like, what? So I ordered it right then and there because I knew I needed it like right away. Amazon primed it, got it the next day two of them mind you in a in a pack so two um thigh high compressions for I think it was like 25 25.99 or something like that on amazon so check amazon look for the oh, i forget how how do you pronounce it Siv, Siv gory or something like that um look for medical grade um compression either thigh high or sock if you only need the knee high and then someone asked me what grade compression uh, mine was like the tw between 20 and 30. Some people need like between 40 and 50 or something. Mine's just between 20 and 30 um, grade compression. 25 bucks, boom, there you go. Um, where to, oh, I already covered this. Someone said, do you have to wear it to work out? Nope, he said it's not necessary, but I will probably still, especially in the beginning, and I'm not going to go super hard in the beginning. I'm going to ease my way back into it, but especially in the beginning, I'm going to wear at least a knee-high sock until I feel like more comfortable and I'm healed. I'm still a little sore and tender. The vein, I mean, I have 
some nasty bruising. Maybe I'll have to show you guys. Um, I'm not right now because I'd have to take the paints off and I'm not going to do that. <laughs> There's some nasty bruising, especially where that blood clot was. Um, so, well, I don't even know where I was going with that. I had nasty bruising, yeah. It's just Oh, I still have some like paint. That's right. I still have some paint in my veins, like just from the healing process. So, I probably still wear it just for, you know, until I feel a little more comfortable. And then, oh, someone asked, does your doctor recommend wearing compression before the surgery and for how long? So my first surgery I had, yes, for insurance purposes, insurance purposes, I had to wear the compression, wear the compression for six months. And then the insurance said, okay, they wore the compression for six months and so now we can approve them to have the surgery done. Um, this, and they don't know if you're wearing it or not. So honestly, I did not, I didn't wear it as much as I should have, but you know, it is what it is. So, uh, this procedure, no, um, I didn't have to go a certain amount of time. He just said from now until the surgery, just make sure you're wearing compression so it doesn't get any worse. Um, just to help with the blood flow and all that or your circulation and everything. Um, there wasn't a specific amount of time I had to wear it, but he just said from now until your surgery, just make sure you wear it as often as possible. That's why you guys always saw me with those knee-high um, socks. I was supposed to wear thigh-high. I didn't have thigh-high, so I just wore knee-high, which is good too. So just as long as I was wearing compression, it was about two months from when I went and had my final um, like ultrasound and visit to the surgery because insurance took like six weeks. And then we moved in between all that. So it did take a couple months, but... Um, the longest is just because insurance has to approve it and that takes a long time. I think that's it for the questions. If you guys had any more questions, leave them um, in this video in the comments or you can go back to that vein post I did and you can comment in there. Um, or D actually just private message me, DM me, private message, message me or email me. Um, and I will try and answer those questions as best as I can. I hope this helps you and I hope you're not scared of the surgery and that I feel like the reward outweighs um, the downtime and the pain way more than, you know, having to live with this pain um, and being not a, I mean, everyone's like, a lot of people said, oh, I'm scared to do it because I don't want to be out of working out for too long is a couple weeks and you can do upper body at least my doctor said I could do upper body and core stuff so honestly it's really not sorry my phone died um what was I saying it's really it oh so if you look at the grand scheme of things being down for a couple weeks and you know having to go through the surgery and everything it's really not that bad if you just look at the overall picture you know no pain or little you know less pain um you know not a big nasty vein sticking out of your leg so um you know out the pros outweigh the cons and for me so just think about it for yourself talk to your doctor see if you you do need it done and i hope that i answered any questions that you may have um and helped you better kind of understand it and the procedure a little bit better so thanks for watching